the hell up! Hendricks, give me that mic. Yeah, I'm talking to you, bozo. Look, I'll be glad to go around. Just get over here. You'll do what I say. You're the prop here. I'm a star. I want you to sit down. I think this press conference is now Brian and Dillman's press conference. And we're really going to find out what all you yes men, what all you obsequious lap dogs. Disco, what recollection do you have of meeting Brian? Well, ladies and gentlemen. Of Dillman? Yeah. Moose can. Oh, it's just a lunatic, bro. At your disposal. Hillman would call me ran- just randomly at like 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes. So go ahead. You want the truth? Ask away. I'm going to rape, village, and plunder this entire federation. Internationally, your track record would uh, make you a liability. Liability? My track record and my marquee name value is going to bring you, Mr. Suit Ratings. It's going to line your pockets with gold. Nobody controls me. That's the legacy of Brian A. Pillman. I do whatever the hell I want when I want to. And he, and he did real well. So he, was a, you know, he, he was a nut, bro. I mean, like, you're out of control. Whether you like it or not, no one's been able to shut me up yet. Notwithstanding those as well of tonight. You didn't even answer him. Well, uh, listen. Well, nonetheless, here comes the answer. Here comes the answer. Yes, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who won it all? At the King of the Ring. It's another intercontinental match right here. The title tournament continues. Kevin Kelly and Jim Ross, and we are being joined at the broadcast location by the gentleman who some call the ticking time bomb. There he is, Ryan Pillman. Mr. Pillman, welcome to the broadcast desk. You can't tell I'm excited, I got big news. I got a big surprise that's gonna end a lot of frustration for journalists all over me. All right. Well, wait a second, T.L. Hubbard oh. going right after the stalker. Wait a minute, who's there? Who's, who's back there? What? Brian Pillman is joining us, and Brian, you also have Owen Hart right now. You had big news last Friday about Brett the, the Hitman family. Hart. That's right. I got the scoop of the year. I can't believe it. Every journalist in the country wanted this. Everybody wants to know what the Hitman's going to do, what his future's going to be. I was lucky enough to get the scoop, and I got to tell you, Owen, I got to thank your family. There's no way I could ever pull this off without Whoa. the help and love of your family. Well, Brian, don't thank me. I owe it all to you. You're the man who got me and Brett back together. Whoa! Finally, Brett has seen the light. And you know, he's a stubborn man. He's hard to get it through his head. But he did finally see the light. Mom and dad are real happy. Everybody is real proud. Brian, I understand, I understand, yeah, we got it. I understand that Brian Pillman is standing by, uh, along with, I understand, with Owen Hart as well. Uh, uh, Mr. Pillman. This Sunday, he's right around the corner. My big exclusive interview with your brother, Brett. I wonder what he's going to tell us, Owen. You know what? Brian, I don't know how you did it, but I am so happy. You are the man that I owe it all to. You are the man that got me and Brett back together. He's a new man, bro. All the twists and turns. Nobody cares because I'm gonna be there, Brett, and I'm gonna get my answers firsthand, son. Because the bottom line is, Stone Cold is the best there is. So what else I you? Live tomorrow night on Raw, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, Ahmed having to surrender the belt due to uh, uh-oh, an injury, but right now, 
Uh-oh. Talk about a loose cannon. Talk about mind games. Brian Pillman recently embarrassed by the comments of Brett the Hitman Hart that you were there to pick up from South Africa. I just want to say one thing to Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman, you are a liar. My lovable brother Owen, you're as bad a liar as Brian Pillman. You're both liars. So don't talk to me anymore either, Owen. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a little bit confused about Brett. You know, he might be getting senile, senile or something because we made an arrangement for him to be here and for some reason, he's not here. Why do you think he's not here? Is that he's scared and that fear is in his eyes is for none other reason than the 1996 King of the Ring, a man none other than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Whoa, uh, it looks like we need to talk to this man. Stone Cold Let's bring Steve him Austin. Out has challenged Brett the Hitman Hart. Brett, if you ever do come back, and I hope you do, son, we're gonna get in this same ring and somebody's gonna get their ass whipped and Austin 316 says it's gonna be your ass and that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. And Stone Philadelphia Cold. sucks, All right. cause I Stone said Cold so. Steve Austin in his commentary. Along with Brian Feldman, again, we do apologize. Well, this should be a most interesting uh, interview. I know that Austin's got a lot to say about the return of Bret the Hitman Hart, the man that Austin will meet November the 17th in Madison Square Garden at the Survivor Series. Steve, it's great to see you. We've been friends a long time. I probably know you better than anybody else. That's why I know how excited you must be with the announcement live on Raw that Bret Hart is going to come out of this semi-retirement and answer your challenge at Survivor Series. Survivor it's series, finally going to be your chance I will face to prove yourself. Stone Cold I sure as hell saw how excited you were when you jumped out of your chair like some kind of cheerleader. It ain't time to start kissing up to Bret Hart yet because he ain't yet lived up to the biggest challenge of his life. Now, Steve, I know how frustrated you are I know the disappointment you've had throughout your career. It's understandable. And you can listen to me, you little crippled freak. Hey, come on. Everybody knows that at one time, I carried you to a world championship. Wow. Madison Square Garden, Bret Hart, you're gonna find out. The whole damn world's gonna find out. I will do exactly what I say I am going to whip his ass. Well, there you have it. Austin versus the best there was, the best there is, and the best there was. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, wow. What a cheap shot. Oh, on. Austin didn't want to hear that. Austin with a cheap shot on Brian Pillman. Pillman is just getting assaulted here by Austin. Austin stomping away at the cripple Brian Pillman. Oh, oh, oh my God! Austin just broke that chain right across Pillman's ankle. I love exactly what he's doing. Take it to him. But perfect. Pillman's a cripple man. I don't care who he, he can't is. defend himself. I don't care. Then get out of wrestling if you can't defend yourself. It's the World Wrestling Federation. Austin's like a, an animal here. Oh, wait a minute. Pillman's ankle. Oh my God! see Steve Austin this aggressive welcome back everyone yes next week via satellite just we have Bret Hart live from Calgary next week ladies and gentlemen joining us the uh, injured Brian Pillman live from his home in Cincinnati Ohio whoa whoa However, whoa 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 joining us now. live from his home what do you mean you're gonna go live from his home you go to Brett's house you go to Brian's house well why didn't you go to Victoria Texas and come to my house well Mr. Austin you are no longer. shut up if anybody's going to Brian's house next week, well, you can damn well bet that Stone Cold Steve Austin's gonna be there because if you're gonna have a little party with some crippled freak, you can bet I'll be there, and that's the bottom don't you, line. Don't you think you've done enough to Brian Pillman? 
What do you mean I've done enough? Look at Wham! Well. <laughs> Look what you did. You took his very cane. If I'd had a little more time with that cane, and who knows look. what I would have done with it. You stopped the progress of the emergency vehicle with that car. You would let him take him to the hospital. If they're going to take him anywhere, they should have carried his ass away. to the cemetery because if he comes back, that's where he's going to go. Are you telling us you're going to go to his house? That's it. You're going to go to Pillman's house? You live at Pillman's house? Hey, when you get jerked around as long as I have, and when the WWF starts jerking you around, you got to do what you got to do. Is that and right? And Brian Pillman's going to get a house call. What <laughs> kind of a man are you? What kind of a man would do that to his Whoa. best friend? What kind of a creep are you? See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Brian Pillman forgot. DTA, brother. Don't trust oh, anybody. Right. I'm the best there is, I'm the best there was, and I'm the best there ever will be, and you're gonna find that out firsthand, son. Say something. Uh, you know, you know, everyone thinks that because I'm coming back that I have this built-up impression in my head that I'm gonna clean up the WWF. I, I know better than anyone else that it's gonna be a real right. hard job. And, Brett, uh, we Steve, thank you so much for joining us. We're it's Austin's out house now. Please. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Brett the Hitman. No, 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 no. You can tell him to go kiss off, but I've been here all night and I ain't leaving yet. And you can stop counting me down because I done told you once, son. We got a damn problem. Hey, wait a minute. No more. That's, that ain't gonna work. That's a production assistant. No, we ain't through that by a long shot. You don't count me down. What is this? Nobody counts me down. You want your precious miners? You think it's all? Ah! You want your precious miners? You think it's all? Ah! All fun and games for Stone Cold. It ain't. Pink tights. What the hell is that all about, this ain't Brett? No ballet class. Sunglasses and sparklers. What a load of crap. So, Brett, you're coming back to continue a legacy? Uh -uh. Stone Cold's gonna make your comeback a living hell. You, know, you can start begging for some mercy you right will now. Beg for you're mercy. You're not gonna find it. I think you're completely pathetic. You're the best there is, was, and ever will be. Whatever. Son, you're looking at the best there Austin is. Austin 316. Oh, Brett, the whole world knows that you quit because you lost to Shawn Michaels. The pretty boy. The boy toy. Kicked your ass back to Canada. You couldn't face yourself and you damn sure couldn't face your family. Ran away in shame. You should have picked another time to come I back, ain't son. No sexy when the boy. bell rings and it's time to get down to business, I dance, I'm gonna son. take seven years of frustration and being pissed off out on your ass. Think about it like this, Brett. You can finally go home, look yourself in the mirror, and get a little peace of mind because you will know you were indeed beaten by a real man. By the way, I believe standing by, is it true? Standing by, ladies, there he is, Brian Pillman. Mr. Pillman, back in the World Wrestling Federation, are you ready for action? Well, Vince, it won't be long. And I can't think of a better vehicle to kick it off than Shotgun Saturday Night, oh, which airs at 12 midnight. The witching hour, when all those sanctimonious censors are sound asleep, which means I'm going to say what I want, do whatever I want. If you don't like it, I don't give a damn because I'm the ammunition for that shotgun. And you can bet I'll hit my finger on that little trick. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to you returning to action. Nothing's changed with Brian Pilsner. As far as I'm concerned, Breath the Hitman Hart is through and finished in the World Wrestling Federation in the world, period. I'll bet on it's it. one down and two to go. Bulldog and Owen Hell, Owen Hart have hell to pay. Well, if I can just interject here. Interject. It just seems to me that you're gonna have hell to pay when you face The Undertaker. The Undertaker is gonna have the coldest day in hell he could ever imagine in Virginia or wherever the hell it is. That's all I got to say. That's the bottom. 
Oh, wait a minute. There you go. Oh, the bulldog. What did I tell you? Come on. We'll get some officials down here. Get the security. Oh, oh. The top champion. Wait a minute. They're signing my dog. What did I tell you? second time tonight. Did you think you'd seen the last of Owen Hart and the poor British Bulldog? You think that Owen Hart is going to let what happened to his brother? Look at this! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know there's a lot of preconceived notions about who Brian Pillman is. I know there's a lot of people that think I'm crazy. But I'm here to tell you, there's a sensitive side to Brian Pillman. And quite frankly, I'm very, very deeply religious. But thankfully, a glorious awakening overcame me. I was overwhelmed with the spirit of truth. And since that day, I have been compelled to pray, to pray for all of our misgivings. And right now, I want to ask each and every one of you to join me in prayer, to bow your heads. Close your eyes and join me in prayer. I'd like to pray for Bret Hart that he may have a speedy, quick, and successful recovery. I'd like to pray for all the people who rejoiced in the savage brutality of last week's show. May they be forgiven. Please continue to bond with me in prayer because I'd like to pray for the complete annihilation and destruction of Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'd like to pray that in this very building tonight, he be struck him down so that he may never, ever again practice his evil crime. Because if he comes back, that's where he's going to go. And I'd like to pray to each and every one of you out there now. What is that? Somebody tells me now. You want your precious money? To you open your back. hearts and minds and let Bret Hart in. Let Bret Hart, the savior of the WWF, in to your heart and soul. Brian Pillman, for once in my life, I ain't got a lot to say. You better pray that I don't come out there and beat the hell out of you. I'm not afraid of the devil. It says in the good book, an eye for an eye, and to turn the other cheek. Come on. Oh, no. He's going to appear, Brad. Oh, no, no, this is not what we expected. This capacity crowd clamoring for Stone Cold Steve Austin to come to the ring. This is not what we expected. Oh, no. Well, I'd say that Pillman's daring him to come out here. Wait a minute, Bulldog's there. Owen's there. It's a trap. It's a trap. Pull the trap on along. Let's go, Tracy. Oh, don't you oh, say I told you we're going straight down. Oh, good. Hold oh, on. Hold on. Look at this. Austin was almost caught in the trap for the destruction, the annihilation of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And we almost saw it. Brother Owen. Brother 
Davey. Please, we need a moment of silence. We're still in the midst of our prayer. Before we were so rudely interrupted, I'd like to finish our moment of prayer because the family that prays together stays together. Let's get down on one knee. Brother Davey, is there anything you'd like to pray for? I'd like to pray for you, Brad. You pay for this, kill and hope you get better. It ain't time to start kissing up the Bret Hart yet. Brother Owen, I'm gonna kill him. Please enlighten us to your right. prayer. I want everybody out here to please, please pray for my brother Brad he and help him heal. He lived up to the biggest challenge in his life. Okay. And also, we're all decent human beings. Please pray for I don't know where the hell you're going. What's going on here? But you better give your what soul to the Lord or somebody because your ass is mine. Oh my goodness. There's a strategy there. Then. Oh, God, Steve Austin. Come on. Because we all know how much he deserves it. How much he deserves it. Please. So the coronation of the new champion can begin tonight. Tonight. Very big match with Rocky Maivia. Brett, I'm gonna win this one for you. I'm dedicating this match to my loving brother, Brett. He's the dearest thing to all of us. Brett, this one's for you, brother. We love you. Hey man, what's wrong with these fans? Why are they booing that? Owen's very That's resilient, very resourceful. Indeed, and <laughs> Owen Hart with a penny combination. <laughs> A, there's a tinge of jealousy in each and every one of you. You know why you're jealous? You're jealous because we've got the we've got tag team gold. We got intercontinental gold. We got European gold. We even got gold in the anvil's teeth. And Brian, well, Brian, Brian, you're the expert on the golden rule. Rainy. Do unto others. And enjoy it! It's gonna line your pockets with gold! Magnificent athletes, but I think the tombstone is coming up! Whoa! Austin! Snapping his neck! Ta -da! It's over! It's over! It's over! Austin's gonna win it! Wait a minute! What the hell is that?
and adios, and then back to the locker room. And officials were able to move Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels out of the ring area. So now I guess it's safe for the Hart Foundation to come back. And interestingly enough, uh, well, oh, here we go. Michaels and Austin did not leave together. Wait a minute. Here come the Hart Foundation. Oh, no. Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, coming in. Here comes Shawn Michaels. Just have to wonder, Mr. Austin, what you think yours and Shawn Michaels' chances really are of becoming tag team champions here tonight. <laughs> Ryan Pillman. Austin Thorpe is still pulled up, and Owen Hart broke it up. All four in the ring now. The official trying to maintain control. <laughs> They know each other very, very well. All right, Mr. Pillman. One week from this Sunday, you in a ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin. You two are no strangers, are you? You're certainly not. But first, let me say this, McMahon. As much as I hate announcers, I'm glad you got this assignment. Because I know, you know, how it feels to be stabbed in the back. And that's all this has been, this whole lineage with Stone Cold. I know the bright lights, the cameras, and the hoopla of the big show can mask the dark, cold realities behind the scenes. But let me tell you something, Steve. Think back. Think back to our days in the Bush Leagues. You ran from it. You shaved the blonde locks. You left the Federation and you came here. And now you've got these people. This wretched refuse of life, this cesspool of depravity, believing you don't care. That's what separates me from Stone Cold. Steve's fate pulse of morality. That's what led him on this trek of sanctity. Thinking he could erase all that we did. Well, Steve, you can't wash the blood from your hands. You saw it and you did it. You're as guilty as me. But come king of the ring, you better hope that John and not Steve 316 applies. For God gave his only son so the world may have everlasting life. And very, very deep hope that applies to you, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Pillman. Certainly another reason the King of the Ring this year is going to be very special. Take out these two guys, you want to take out each other. I'll take you out. And if we take out these two, then you can work on me later. What's your reaction? Save your ass. Oh, you ain't saving nothing. You ain't saving nothing of mine. Believe me, this ass doesn't need protecting. I can do it by myself. Because you can't do it without me. Oh, yeah, you can't do it without me. You can't do it without me. What was that about? You know, Vince, we're enjoying this lover's quarrel so much. I'm willing to let the boy toy take my place at King of the Ring, so you can work out your differences, provided I get a shot at you in short order. Well, you got yourself a deal, son. I'll take on Shawn Michaels at King of the Ring. You want Brian Pillman, you can have him. You just gotta wait till Monday night. And on Sunday, the Heartbreak Kid is gonna show you what a little sweet chin music sounds like, buddy of mine. Hey, Steve, we're going to have to wait till Monday night, you godless piece of...
Uh oh, look out here. Vince, thank you. I guess, Brian, the first question is whether or not you feel somewhat responsible for the matchup we're going to see here tonight between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels. Responsible? Hell yes! I reeled that sucker right in. But it was Brett who inspired me when he whispered in my ear. <laughs> well, then why are you here tonight? I'm here to give my support for the family. And I'm here to watch that boy toy violate that rat's ass so I can see what's going to be left for me tomorrow night. It's been a long time, Steve. But I was told, see, and you shall fuck. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Stone Cold Steve Austin against Brian Pillman moments away. And yeah, there you see it. And the Hart Foundation is getting together, plotting their strategy. Get them. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Pillman ready for action against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Brian Pillman is absolutely a loose cannon. There's no telling what's going to happen in this matchup. Pillman against Austin. And here we go. This is what we've been waiting for all night. I don't know why people like him, but they do. Oh, wait a minute! From behind! It's the hearts! From behind! It's a four-on-one gang attack! Good grief! Austin's been dismantled! And man, mankind! What? Mankind? Mankind? Ladies and gentlemen, here at SummerSlam, Million Dollar Chance is being presented by the Discovery Zone. Watch Raw's War to find out how you can win a million dollars because it pays to watch Raw's War. All right, standing by right now, Brian Pillman. I want to Mr. Pillman, before we come to you, let's take you back to an infamous piece of footage, indeed. Let's take you back to the King of the Wing, and uh, I guess maybe you'd, you'd call this the swirly piece of footage. We can see here the altercation that took place at the King of the Ring. Stone Cold Steve Austin taking you from pillar to post and unfortunately winding up in porcelain. But notwithstanding that indignity, could there be one even greater than that one tonight, Mr. Pillman? Because as we've just found out, indeed your Bret Hart uh, family members are going to be handcuffed to the ring post. Well, you're real funny, McMahon. Well, they are. Handcuffed to the ring post. You're I mean, real. Laugh. Right when the Heart Foundation severs the shackles of oppression and censorship and lets the world know what we really think. You've got the audacity to handcuff my comrades like common thieves. Well, you made one mistake. You didn't put the cuffs on the convicted felon, the one with the rap sheet. So Stone Cold's gonna pay. So Shamrock, you got nothing to worry about. You can stay being the world's most dangerous referee and working on that three count, son. Cause Stone Cold is going down the toilet tonight. Kick out for Austin. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, where did he get that key? He got, he got it from the referee that's down. Owen, oh, that's a key. Owen picked that pocket of the referee. Stone Cold. And Owen going at it. Austin is fighting for all he's got. Stone Cold with no allies. We've got our match right here. Wait it's Mankind. Mankind and Goldust. Mankind and Goldust. Here comes Kid Shamrock. Goldust chasing Nightheart. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to get it on right now. Oh, oh, oh look out. And look at this, Shamrock back to the corner. Oh, unbelievable. The Shamrock, Shamrock warning off. Exactly this is not the time or the place. What they've done is laid down a challenge. A challenge. I say looking at this ring right now. Five wrestlers in the world. 
that we are that five. And Heart Foundation, if you want us to come to Calgary, well, then we'll come to Calgary and we'll whoop your ass. I don't need you four guys, not for one minute. Gorilla Monsoon ain't gonna let me do it by myself. One time, one time I'll step in the ring with your asses. Bottom. Stone Cold Steve Austin, in his own inimitable way, has consented. And it looks like he has some partners. All right, standing by right now, ladies and gentlemen, the Hart Foundation. Gentlemen, what about it? You have your answer. You know who your five opponents are now, do you not, at the Canadian Stampede? That's right. The mystery's over. We know what the five are, and we're going to treat them like the American scum that they are at the Calgary Stampede. We are going to destroy them because in Canada, we don't have discrimination. We will treat them just like the scum they are. That's right. We don't discriminate. We're an equal opportunity destroyer in the battle lines have been drawn in blood. A 10-man tag team spectacular in Calgary at the Canadian Stampede. Will Austin Shamrock, the LOD, and Goldust be able to turn back the challenge of the Hart Foundation? That question will be answered on pay-per-view. Let me tell you something, Ross. Right after your nation celebrates its birthday, July 4th, there's going to be a wake July 6th in Calgary during the Canadian Stampede because the Hart Foundation, self-proclaimed criminals, thanks to the WWF, is going to show the entire world what it's really like to be dirty, nasty, ugly, and all those good things you attribute to serial killers. Because five people are going down that night. Well, Brian, up. please, try to maintain your composure. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to come up on July the 6th. These two great athletes, one-on-one -on -one here, here on Shotgun Saturday night. Owen Hart, the reigning intercontinental champion. And uh, again, we're, I don't know if you can hear it off on our mics here, but they've got some uh, rather uh, dubious Pillman sucks chance here. That is a bunch of jealous individuals. I tell you, you just got to calm down and let this thing go. This Pillman, it means nothing hey, anyway. Somebody's going to be a sacrificial lamb tonight, Ross, because I've heard Pillman sucks for the last time. Hey, listen to this, Ross. Did you hear that? What? You heard it. Yeah, that's right. Ryan, we, you we got a match here. I'm going to show you the hard way what it's like to be a worthless loser. I'll smack you around, punk. He's yelling at you for, Ross. He ain't yelling at me, buddy. He's yelling at you. Very impressive entry by Jesse James here tonight. I'll tell you one thing with the attitude. What are you doing, Brian? Hitting that fan with that pencil right in the face. And now Brian Pillman leaving the broadcast booth and attacking a fan. A ticket buying fan. This is an assault. Somebody's going to be a sacrificial lamb tonight, Ross. Well, somebody's got to stop him. Pillman, somebody please pull Brian Pillman off this kid. And I'm the kind of man that will. Brian Pillman has spent. He's an absolute lunatic. And brother, oh, what an embarrassing and a tragic situation here in the WWF where a, an athlete to attack a fan is absolutely uncalled for. Brian Pillman has spent. He's a maniac. Brian Pillman has spent. Brian Pillman has spent. Brian Pillman has spent. Ten-man tag team matchup. We had an occasion to chat with Mr. Pillman earlier on about his unbelievable actions last week on Shotgun Saturday night. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pillman was fired for those actions. Pillman yanked a fan over the barrier and just pummeled him. Now the fan had been heckling Brian Pillman all through the evening. I think you'll grant that. Well, I was sitting right there at Shotgun Saturday night. It just happened a couple of days ago. Since then, Pillman has been fired. This is a heinous act, folks. It is a it's irresponsible, yes, and, uh, and, and he was—he's fired. Pillman will no longer be on Shotgun Saturday night. 
And I understand Mr. Monsoon has, uh, well, he's forced Mr. Pillman to make a public apology. I deeply regret my senseless attack on a helpless fan, and I'd like to apologize for it. I'd also like to apologize for being the only athlete in the WWF with any guts. But I'm not gonna apologize for taking these incisors to mankind's good ear and showing Marv Albert and Mike Tyson what it's like to take a bite out of the human anatomy. <laughs> Where these people take pride in spitting on me and throwing coins at me. Well, in Canada, I'll finally get the respect that I deserve. You want respect? I would suggest that Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to give he and his partners a lot of you gentlemen respect. And maybe you know that better than anybody. He'll get nothing like it. Austin's a perfect example of what America has become. The social depravity. They cheer this guy. He's a bum. He's a loser. He doesn't have the class. He doesn't have the integrity. He doesn't have the intestinal fortitude of the dynasty. And what about all this gold? And what about dealing with gold dust? We're not scared of gold dust. We don't have to be gender benders to go out and kick some ass. When we get in the ring, we are going to destroy everybody. We don't need pretty little makeup on our face like LOD. We don't have to walk around cursing like Stone Cold Steve Austin. We don't have to be a gender bender. And we're not the ultimate fighting goofballs like Ken Shamrock. What we are is true men. One last word from the anvil. You know something, McMahon? you got a lot of questions, but all your questions are going to be answered by the Hart Foundation in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the loose cannon of the World Wrestling Federation, Brian Pillman! Perhaps a little apprehension in the voice of uh, Vince McMahon. Who knows what Brian Pillman's going to say? He's already got himself fired as a commentator on Shotgun Saturday Night. Yeah, dragged a fan over the railing and, uh, well, uh, showed him another use for a pencil. And that, of course, uh, w w would lead us to your match at SummerSlam with Goldust. And notwithstanding the caliber of the match, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if you might dare to, to make some sort of a promise as relates to your match with Goldust. I think I would be willing to proffer a promise, and we know the history of Goldust, Dustin Runnels, as you did that poignant retrospective on his life that was so touching, Vince. Thank you very much. But Goldust, all that abuse and neglect that you suffered at the hands of your father will be amended, because I'm going to pay you whole hell of a lot of attention because I'm going to embarrass and humiliate you far beyond the scope of your drag queen status and if I don't I'll wrestle you on Raw the next night wearing a dress years and years of abuse and neglect by your little boy Justin while you fed your massive ego and your fat face on top of it. George, your little son, you're the most celebrated drag queen of the century. Dustin, I know your daddy broke your heart. Come SummerSlam, I'm gonna rip it out of your chest. And if I don't, the next night on Raw, I'll wrestle you wearing a dress. You put on a dress. I'll put on a dress and since I'm going to throw one on. And it might as well, it be, might as well be Marlena's. Marlena's. And I can promise you, if I'm going to do that, his wife. that won't be the only thing of hers I'll be getting into. All right, that's enough of that, man. He's sick, he's sick. Possesses the gold. 
but this angry hitman is hell-bent on reclaiming it. And I will be the World Wrestling Federation champion for a fifth time. SummerSlam, the reigning Intercontinental champion, got the one, two, three in the ten-man tag. But the bottom line is a promise this stone cold killer, stone cold killer, this stone cold killer intends to keep. I'll kiss his ass if I can kick it, and that's the way it's gonna be. Stridex presents WWF SummerSlam, Heart and Soul, live Sunday, August 3rd, only on pay per view. Oh. Austin, an opportunist, with Owen Hart now. Let's see what Austin can do with him in. No. How about that? A gun ring! Let's go! Let's go! Save to the Undertaker! Austin <laughs> dropped right on his hand! And how much I went in there last night and proved that I am the best there is! Don't waste time, Owen! Oh, just kidding! The best uh -huh. there was! And, now, uh, and plain and Austin simply driving. the best no, that there ever will be! And I proved it against all odds! Against the, a man from the dark side, a man that's from the devil, and death, and despair. Hey, this one's for you, brother. And as far as Brian Pillman goes, the Heart Foundation, we don't wear dresses. We're not going to wear a dress because there's a new boss in town, there's a new sheriff. And this sheriff says that Brian Pillman's got far too much class to ever lower himself to that level and be wearing a stupid dress. Well, uh, first off, the Heart Foundation, Red Heart, we don't wear dresses. I'd like to let you know a little because secret. There's a new boss in town. There's a new sheriff. You aren't the new sheriff in town. And this sheriff says, I am. That Brian Pillman's got far too much And I make the rules in the World Wrestling Federation, not you. And you, Brian Tillman, you will live up to your agreement from last night. And next night on Raw, I wish of you wear a dress. And you will wear a dress tonight right here on Raw, or you'll be suspended. And you will. Pillman, Brian Pillman, Commissioner Slaughter here. Open up the door. Come Pillman, on, catching, Brian. Open what? up the door. Here's your dress. Put it on. I'm not wearing that dress. I know oh, you like to get you your jollies pushing your privates around the barracks, but you're not about to push my privates anywhere, Slaughter. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to put this dress on. And you're gonna wear it every week on Raw until you beat somebody right here on Raw or you're out of here, pal. Suspended. Welcome back to Raw. Goldust and Marlena here in the front row. What brings you folks out to ringside tonight? Well, you know, I haven't seen Brian Pillman act too much like a gentleman, but I'm curious to see how he does as a lady, huh? Goldust? <laughs> as much as that idiot's been running his mouth, I wouldn't miss this for the world watching him wear my beautiful wife's dress. <laughs> Second leg of gold, Goldust and Marlena, and here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Big mistake. Yeah, big oh, mistake. Right. This is Jamie for one fall wage, 20 minutes time limit. Making his way to the ring. He's a little reluctant to the ring. Ohio, the lady at 230 pounds, the loose cannon, Brian Pillman. He's 
for the Venice match and the result of a count out, Bob Holly. Brian Pillman, open up the door. It's Commissioner Slaughter. Pillman, open up the door. Pillman, open up the door. What? Here's your wrestling gear. Put it on. We don't wear dresses. That's not wrestling gear. That's a dress, Slaughter. That's your wrestling gear until you win a match on Raw. And we have Goldust and Marlena who have joined us. What is the purpose of joining us? Oh, oh. you would love to know that, wouldn't you? Yeah, we would. And we got a big surprise for you and the whole world. Yes, we do. This is going to be the greatest Shattered, Dun Shattered Dreams productions of all time. You have I'm a sure Shattered, you've seen Shattered Dreams production? Yes, I'm sure you've seen Air Force One, right? All right, we're, it blows we're that trying away. to find this. Show a little premiere of it right now, please. All right, it's bigger than Conspiracy Did Theory? Oh, yes, way bigger. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think I know Brian Pillman better than anybody in the WWF. And with this dress business, we are on the verge of pushing this young man over the edge. That's right, you're inciting him. Look at this, they push him out of here. And he is, I don't know. He's a former All-American football player, played in the NFL, a very proud athlete. Yes, he's a little psychotic. Yes, he's unpredictable. But uh, boy, this is put, stretching the old envelope. This has got him on the edge right here, but Wendley finds out that they were filming him. And Pillman just barely able to kick out. Remember, Pillman's got to win a match on Raw right on this broadcast on. to be able to get rid of that uh, that ring attire, that dress. And one thing about it, Goldust and Marlena are not here at ringside thanks to Sergeant ah! Slaughter. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. There we go, DDT. And now, good, good hit Wait a minute. And what's this in the middle of the match? Goldust and Marlena are coming back. Goldust has some popcorn. What's he doing up there? Where's Sergeant Slaughter now? Brian Pillman looking up at the ah. Titantron. And Brian Pillman is really upset. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah. Brian Pillman comes oh, no. <laughs> The deck seems to be stacked against Brian Pillman. He can't do anything right these days. And again, WWF officials just might be pushing the envelope a little too far. I think they are. I'll tell you what, that means Pillman next Monday night in Atlantic City at the Atlantic City Convention Center will once again have to wear a dress. And he is some anger because he's been wearing a dress of the late for good reason. You better not say Mrs. Brian no. Pillman. And Brian Pillman. Here he comes. He's going to wear that dress well, until he wins Ohio a match on Raw. A nice, uh, oh no! This a nicer is, dress than he's been wearing. This is. This Last is several really weeks he's been having problems. Mr. Pillman has nice cleavage, though. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, there he goes. DD team. Wait a minute, Goldust. Goldust is on his way down here. Wait, Goldust is in the ring. What's he doing? What? He's going no. after Jesse James. Why did he? The winner of this match is a result of outside interference. Double J, Jesse J. What? Wait a minute, Cole. Oh, now. You've interfered in a Brian Pillman match. What is going on? Well, just look at him in this pretty little frilly gold dress out there. I just wanted to see it one more week. Now hey, Gold Dust. Come on, what? Another one. You think this is a big joke? You think it's funny? for a world-class athlete like Brian Pillman to come out in front of all these sick freaks wearing a dress? Yes, I do think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you probably would like to get rid of me for good, wouldn't you? Yeah, I sure would. Why don't you get you the hell out of here? You would never, ever see me again, huh? Yeah, why not? Why don't you get out of here? Well, I'll tell you what. You promise to give me one more match. And if you beat me, I'll leave the WWF forever. Uh oh, uh -oh. forever? Don't do it. You're talking about forever, right? I know. Forever. Long time. Well, 
Show me the papers and let me sign. No, Hillman don't do it. But if I beat you, then I get little Marlena. And our little Marlena. my personal is Dakota, our daughter. Assistant. Our right now. For 30 days. Give me a break, big man. 24 hours a day. There's no way in hell that I am wrestling you. With her as a stipulation, no. That's a no-go. Well, we may not be good at this. You threw the keys away. Cemetery. Ever see me again, but because if he comes let back, me let you in on a little secret. That's where he's gonna go. There's always a big part of me around you all the time because you know your little daughter, Dakota. She's mine. She's my love child. She's mine. And it was Trying to speak. Marlena trying mine. to speak to Goldust, stating She's that. My love child. And also to Brian Pillman. They they're they're going to take the challenge. His wife. Yeah. His wife. And if I'm going to put on Marlena's dress. For what? For what? What? I can promise you one thing. Goldust. Oh, What's wrong with you? Understanding here. Do that. Why are you doing that? Marlena the only thing the I've challenge, heard. I'll be getting into. This idiot isn't worth that. I'm here with Brian Pillman, and Brian, uh, the stipulations for your match at Ground Zero, you know, for a single woman are kind of intriguing, but for a married woman like Marlena, someone married to Goldust, you know, I'd say it's a bit apprehensive. At, at well, let's face it, let's be quite frank about it, it's going to be real hard at first, because Marlena is going to have to swallow her pride when this whole thing starts off, but hey, I'm no taskmaster. A few light chores, cleaning my pipes, some light S&M, sweeping a mop in your head. I've got all the right tools for her to do that job. And late at night, she brings in that sweet little box of chocolates. So everybody knows I got a sweet tooth. I think everything's going to be just fine. The bottom line is, I'm not going to make Terry do anything she hasn't already done with me. What despicable remarks from Brian Pillman. committee out here for Brian Pillman. But when Pillman brings Marlena out, I would think that Goldust has to be concerned about the safety of Marlena. Goldust here to get a, a glimpse of his wife who he hasn't seen in well, about 24 hours now. She may throw rocks at him. <laughs> and his opponent from Cincinnati, Ohio, weighing in at 230 pounds, the loose cannon, Brian Pillman. Hey, Gold Dust. Hey, Gold Dust, it's me, Brian Pillman. Where is I'm it? on the phone from home. Sorry I can't be there tonight in person, but I'm not about to enter that arena until the WWF can guarantee me and Marlena a safe environment. Besides, I'm physically exhausted from last night. I do it! Whew. She's a real dynamo. But even though I can't be there in person, 
I had a little tape made. And if the producer could be so kind to play it for us right now. Oh my gosh. Part one of Brian Pillman's X-Files. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Woohoo! Hi, Dustin. Welcome to Brian Pillman's X-Files, day one. <laughs> I gotta give you credit, though. I've been on the road 10 years. Two-time All-American, world-class athlete, NFL. And look at me. I'm exhausted, but for good reason. And you'll see that later when I show you this room. And I thought she was just spunky. She's a machine. She's an animal. Remember what Pillman has repeatedly stated, Marlena certainly had a free one coming on Brian Pillman. Here we go now. Oh, Pillman being set up for the sacrifice. Brian Pillman's going to take the ride. Oh. oh. I hate it when that happens, but you know what? Nothing comes between my Calvin Kleins and me, except of course, your wife, Terry. <laughs> oh my goodness, what happened here last night? Somebody started riding here? And look at this bed. Dustin, it's almost 10 o'clock. Look at it, feel that thing. Do you know where your wife is? Well, I do. Because part two of Billman's X-Files is going to be live and in Technicolor. <laughs> you look like you could use some entertainment. So here's more of last night's festivity. So let's roll Brian Billman's X-Files. Oh, I'm part two. It's part two, just like I promised. Unfortunately, this segment can't go too long because after a hard, nice work, Terry you hear me? needs to take a hot shower. <laughs> Marlena trying to speak. Oh, isn't that special? I love you. Oh. She's getting primed. She's ready for round two. <laughs> Dustin, I hope you get a good night's sleep tonight because I got a strong belief I'm gonna have a hard time, a real hard time getting to sleep tonight. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Well, Brian Pillman has provided our WWF New York producers yet another installment of Pillman's X-Files. Hi, Dustin. Guess who? <laughs> Just want to let you know, your wife is in real good hands, having the time of her life. And trust me, she's never looked better. Just sign up Mr. and Mrs. Pillman so we can get out of here. So what are you doing? Now that she, I mean, everything's back under control. Being the great guy I am with the big heart, I'm going to let you and Terry spend some quality time together. So here it goes. Terry. Come on. So, Say hi to Dustin. Honey, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. I'll be fine. Please. Please take care of Dakota and tell her I love her. Just take care of the baby. That's right. You take care of the baby, and I'm going to take care of your old lady. <laughs> Let's get 
to Marlena. This is going to be great, Ross. I've seen her. Wait till you see this. Oh, look at that. Oh, my. Company to the ring by Marlena. I, from Cincinnati, I can't. Ohio, Ohio, look at what Pillman has done to this young woman. Oh. The loose cannon, Brian Pillman. Look at this. Look at, oh, look, look at the nose ring. Ross is going up to get a word with her. And I understand that Brian Pillman has even had her with a tattoo right on her. Or is there anything you want to say here real quick? I miss my baby. Oh, I miss my husband. Dustin. I just want to go home. I hope you get a good night's sleep tonight. Because... Wow. Pillman has made Marlena his kind of woman. Woo, look at that outfit. She must despise Pillman for all that Pillman has done to her and her family. Oh. And a swinging neck breaker. Pillman is in trouble. Dude Love has this match won, I believe. Oh, no. Sweet shim music. Sweet, wait, there's, there's, there's Goldust. What? There's Goldust. He's not supposed to be here. Goldust attacking Pillman. Commissioner. Commissioner. Look, get her, Brian. Get her out of here. Pillman's won this match by disqualification. Oh, what a, what a chaotic situation. El Pantera victorious on WWF New York. I don't know what you call it, but it ended up in a sunset flip. I know what you call this. You call this Brian Pillman's X-Files. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for another edition of Brian Pillman's X-Files. Earlier tonight, you saw me advance in the Intercontinental Championship Tournament. Thanks to you, jilted lover, gold dust. I've got a buxom babe under my arm, your wife, of course, and soon, I'm gonna have gold around my waist. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's it right there. Ooh. Oh yeah, mm. oh, oh, you've done this before, you naughty little girl. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> As fate would have it. You see, late last night, and me, while Dustin was reading to go the the three top. little pigs, uh -huh. I had his old lady, Marlena, squealing like a pig. Uh, we don't need to hear this. <laughs> and right when I had her bent over for that last glorious position, Whoa. I slipped and fell in the bathtub and broke my arm. What? And now I'm going to be forced to forfeit this match. But I know that Owen, my comrade of the Hart Foundation, will take this forfeit into the title match. Well, you got to do what you got to do. I hate to accept like Sergeant Slaughter, Commissioner Slaughter. Yeah, think fast. Just as I thought, this match, this Intercontinental Tournament match, will go on as schedule. Are you, are you, will never ever wrestle in the World Wrestling Federation again? Referee, ring the bell. Go back. Wait a minute. Go down. Go down to schedule to take on Bret Hart later on. Somebody stop me. Go down. It was a hard fought battle. But I did it! I'm in the finals for the Intercontinental Belt! 
And I want to dedicate this to my loving brother, Brett. I am going to whip brother, his ass. Without you, I couldn't have done it. And all my great fans all around here, Our foundation. especially the loving ones in Canada, I did it. And I'm going to do you proud because I love look out, you. Look out. Thank you now, ladies and gentlemen, to a disturbing piece of videotape supplied by Brian Pillman before the weekend. And again, this may not be suitable for all members of the family. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, I've done this before, you naughty little girl. Oh, oh Peek-a-boo. <laughs> I got to tell you, pretty beat. I'm wet. Quite frankly, I'm bushed. But, as I promise you, this segment will go on because, welcome back, it's another edition of the Brian Pillman Triple X Files, and I do mean Triple X. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. I got news for the WWF. Marlena and Brian Pillman will not fight dude love and bad blood unless we get some restraints put on the psychopath the heretic the nut the jilted lover and well i was gonna say former hubby but you guys still are equally married because you know it i know it He's going to come out of that crowd. He's going to sneak up from behind me like he's been doing and try to end my career. So we want some guarantees. And once we get those, I'll kick that goof dude loves ass all over that ring and show him some bad blood. I'm not going to show him anything else. <laughs> Got to keep those sensors happy. So what I'm going to tell you right now is, I want gold dust bound in shackle. No, I want him handcuffed to that ring post and bad blood. And by the way, Dustin, you're going to have to get your own handcuffs. <laughs> ours are going to be pretty busy. <laughs> trying to subdue Goldust while Pillman leaves here, maybe for the last time with Marlena. From St. Louis, bad blood. Hot this is also Marlena's birthday. Oh, what's going to happen to Marlena pay-per-view? Ladies and gentlemen, we have some tragic news to report. Approximately 5 o'clock Central Time, we here in the World Wrestling Federation were notified that Brian Pillman has passed away. Brian Pillman was last with the World Wrestling Federation last night in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, he was found dead in his hotel room in Bloomington, Minnesota this afternoon. At this juncture, we do not have um, any more information uh, other than to tell you that Brian Pillman is dead. We here at the World Wrestling Federation offer our condolences to the Pillman family. Welcome everyone to a sold out jam packed Keel Center. Welcome everyone to Bad Blood in your house. We are live from St. Louis, Missouri. Hello everyone, Vince McMahon. You're along with Joe and the King Lawler, and of course, good old JR. And I would suggest we're going to cut loose from the start, JR. No doubt about it. Well, you're real funny. This is going to be a physical, physical matchup, and no better way to kick oh, off Bad Blood here in good old St. Louis. Well, I'm just going to say this right off the bat. I want to go on record and say it. That you or some of these WWF officials belong in a cell. Yourself. Take that poor thing to the bush To be put inside this cell. It is truly going to be hell for Shawn Michaels tonight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps you uh, heard the announcement of the free-for-all. I promise you. The unfortunate announcement. We here in the World Wrestling Federation were notified Brian that Pillman Brian Pillman has passed, passed away. away. Brian Pillman... This afternoon, we were notified just before we went on the air. We'll try not certainly to belabor that point, and we have very little information to give you. If we have more information through the broadcast, we will give you that, but I would suggest not too much of that is likely to be forthcoming until tomorrow morning. Scheduled, uh, what was scheduled, ladies and gentlemen, 
we were to have seen in just a moment, we were to have seen the matchup with Brian Pillman and Dude Love. And as uh, we reported uh, in the free for all, as soon as we got the information, that unfortunately Brian Pillman was found dead in his hotel room this afternoon in Bloomington, Minnesota, where he had competed the night before. Um, nonetheless, uh, we offer our condolences to Mr. Pillman's family. Let me let you in and on a little secret. As soon as we have more information, we will give you everything that we know. But right now, that's because you know your basically all we know. And Dakota. So we have scrambled a bit and come up with, I uh, believe, an attraction that you're going to very much appreciate. And here She's they come. Mine. She's you want your precious miners? Oh. You think it's time to be my miners? It's time to be my precious miners. With a team at a time limit. Coming down the aisle. And a total of my team. 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 Of and quite frankly, I'm very, very deeply religious. Mosaic and Tarantula making their first appearance in the World Wrestling Federation. Since last week. That is Mosaic uh, on the right part of your screen, the larger of the two. Finney's is Tarantula. Over and over again. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, they uh, this capacity crowd, they have brought their posters, their signs, I became and again, their freedom of expression. Pushed. Very much appreciated tonight, as it always is in the World Wrestling Federation. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Last night, yesterday afternoon, Brian Pillman was found dead in a hotel room in Bloomington, Minnesota. He had competed the night before. A WWF Kansas City attendance record, 13,245 in the house tonight. You add that to the 21,000 plus last night. We're looking at 35,000 fans attending Stop the WWF the Live tonight. Allow me to say this. I can't wait, and I hope they really instate Stone Cold Steve Austin back here in the WWF because I can't wait to get my hands on him. Now, I know he tried to cost me my Intercontinental title last night. He tried to get me disqualified, but it backfired. And Stone Cold Steve Austin, I am not scared of you. I'm the Intercontinental Champion. I'm the best. And if you ever want to get back in the ring, don't let some contract or some neck injury hold you back. Come on in here and take your best shot, son. There you go. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in suburban Cincinnati, uh, the wife of Brian Pillman, Melanie Pillman. Melanie, thank you so much. I'm sure you're distraught, shocked, dismayed over this, this news, and we thank you very much for, for joining us tonight. I, I wonder, uh, there's a great deal of speculation, obviously, uh, when a 35-year-old man who is in competitive condition passes away. Can you please tell us to and whatever speculation there may be. Can you, what can you tell us about what you have been told uh, as far as Brian's death is concerned? Um, Jerry well, um, needs to take Apparently Shout. there was a uh, problem with his heart and uh, apparently his heart was put under a lot of stress for some reason and um, I can't really oh, uh, you know, tell you for I sure what that you. reason was, but it was apparent heart attack in his sleep. Oh. And, uh, Dustin, until um, the tests all were back. I hope you get a good night's sleep tonight because it, it's kind of inconclusive right now. I got a strong belief I'm gonna have a hard time. Apparently, a um, real his, his heart hard time. Was under a lot of stress. Getting to sleep tonight. <laughs> it was there was some speculation last night. See you next time. There was some speculation that, that he may have taken too much, if in fact that is proven to be the case, which it is yet to be. Is there anything that you would want to say to aspiring athletes who do get hurt and have to resort to prescribed medication, painkillers? Now we're going to have the story of another former Bengal who is trying to keep drugs and kids apart. Now, what makes him different? Well, as I said, when he talks to... If you want to experiment with drugs, it's like playing Russian roulette. Brian Tillman is a man with a message, and if you're smart, you'll listen. Well, Vince, I, you know, I can't comment on whether that, you know, I know that my husband 
well, not only was he an athlete, but he was involved in a car accident, too, and he had extensive injuries from that. And yes. Brian Tobin was a standout football player at Miami University. In 1984, he played for the Bengals under special teams. Most recently, though, professional wrestler with the Stampede Wrestling Association in Canada. But for the past two years, when he's not talking tough in the ring, he's wrestling with another all-too-real problem with high school kids. That is the dangers of drugs. But I don't think I'd be willing to take that chance because it's just like playing Russian roulette. You got one bullet in that chamber. You may click that gun and, and nothing may happen. You'll be just fine and well. But then again, you may pull that trigger and blow your brains out. And I wouldn't want to take that chance. And that's the chance you're taking when you experiment with drugs um, and alcohol. And, uh, and then after the accident, it was a lot harder for him. But um, I think all athletes, to a degree, um, experience a reliance on pain medicine and um you know i knew it was just a matter of time before um it happened to someone and um fortunately it it was my husband and um fortunately it fortunately it it was my husband and um i just wanted everyone to know that um i hope it's a wake-up call to some, some of you because um it could be your husband next or it could be you and you know you don't want to leave behind a bunch of orphans like my husband did brian pillman oh, yeah it was, that's a hard one right because i remember i rode with him um and i i was driving my first time there and uh if i felt bad for him because it was almost like you know he needed help but there was nobody there to help him when, when he died, is you know something that uh, it's too bad. Brian had uh, you know a lot of throat problems. He had his ankle fused. Um, his health, he was in bad shape uh, health wise. You know, that's personal problems at his house, I guess. Uh, we went into a Waffle House, and I remember we went in to go eat, and he was drinking these cokes. And uh, I guess everything caught up with him, and he, he had a heart condition on top of that. Where everybody was going stone cold. And that was the the legal cause of his death, was a heart condition. He died in his hotel room, and it's just uh. You know, a real sad thing. And by the time we got there, within 30 minutes, Brian couldn't hardly uh, talk. For someone of Brian's intelligence, one of the smartest guys I ever knew for something like that to happen. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with him? So we he goes in with me, and I'm kind of helping him in. Fred Hart said on the show that uh, he wasn't close friends with him, but he, he considered him a friend. And he said that he felt somewhat guilty because um, he said people knew that he was struggling with his life. And we sit down, and... Uh, and he's like, he's passing out. Do you feel any guilt? And I remember, and Stone Cold was laughing. You know, it's always that, it's always that question of saying. And I'm looking at him going, dude, there's something wrong. We should we call somebody? And they're like, dude, just put him in the car. It's always that question of and saying. And I was like, are you sure? Do I take him to the hospital? He goes, don't take him to the hospital. And I, I was green. Like, I had no clue. Dude, but he, he, he didn't look for sympathy, and he didn't want it. You know, he, he was a very headstrong person. He wanted to do his own thing, and he always did. And uh, it, it was sad because that's my only memory. At the end, everything caught up with him, and it was a bad time. And like I said, I guess he had some problems at the house. Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman. I just got a, uh, it was on Twitter the other day, I guess it's been 20 years wow. since Brian Pillman passed away. We here in the World Wrestling Federation were notified that Brian Pillman has passed away. And I'll never forget, uh, I, want, I want to see if you got any uh, Pillman stories. Brian Pillman was last with the World Wrestling Federation last night in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'll never forget, man, right before he passed away, we was up there, was it many or somewhere? In St. Paul, Minnesota. Because we are going to have a pay-per-view. And uh, he was found dead in his hotel room in Bloomington, Minnesota. He's kind of uh, wobbling a little bit, carrying his suitcase mm -hmm. out of building. I hadn't worked uh, yet. And everything just caught up with Brian. I was like, man, he don't, I, he don't look so good. I, I, I'm not, I don't feel guilty about it at all. You know, Brian, Brian went away, and I don't think there's anything that was going to change that. I guess it was just time. Do you think wrestling uh, contributed much to his death? But, you know, I saw Brian, and then, uh, you know, he, he ended up passing away, but I was just like... Well, I think life contributed to his death. Never in a million years that I think that guy would would meet his demise that early because... You know, I think it was just... Brian was uh, 34, 35 years old with the heart problem and all that. There was no way the guy was so smart and, and just intelligent and uh, electric. And uh, all the pain he was he was in, you know, from, from the car wreck. and There's nothing ever going to happen to that guy. And then all of a sudden, you know, we heard he died, and then we're out there, and they, they ring the bell 12 times. Please all rise. Please stand. And they ring the bell 12 times. And as we told the bell 10 times. 12 times. Everything. It was just. Out uh, of respect. You know, it was just, just something that happened. To the late Brian Pillman. 
Ryan Pillman, a good friend of Stone Cold Steve Austin, and uh... they ring the bell twelve times. If I'd had a little more time with that cane, who knows what? what I would have done with it? And then, as they were taking Brian Pillman out in the emergency vehicle, you stopped the progress of the emergency vehicle with that car. You wouldn't let him go. You wouldn't let him take him to the hospital. Well, that's, that's because if they're going to take him anywhere, they should have carried his ass to the cemetery because if he comes back, that's where he's going to go. And they ring the bell 12 times. I don't think it really hit me or I understood that Brian was God until they started ringing that, that damn bell. Really? Told him about whatever. And then it was like, yeah, that was, a, that was a heavy moment. It was all money that rough. It was like, God dang it. The gravity of it all, all weighed in. Was, if he can die, that means any of us can. Yeah, so. Whether you like it or not, no one's been able to shut me up Here yet. Here comes the answer, yes, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who won it all? At the king of the ring. I've had enough of this garbage. You guys can go back to your nine to five working class hero molds. I'm going to get the out of here.